So the US election is just around the corner and as always the same old media hysteria and market uncertainty is back. What do you know? And so hopefully here I am to put things in a historical perspective and prepare you as an investor for what's to come. Welcome back to another video trying to go off topic today but also stay on topic I guess. Now the US election is not that big of a thing in the big picture but right now it's pretty much all that's happening and many investors and people in general are wondering what does it mean for me as an investor and should I think about it or worry about it at all. So uh, go ahead watch the video give it a like if you like it uh, subscribe if you want more content I post a video every Monday at 8 p.m. EDT, no, 2 p.m. EDT and 8 p.m. CEST. Stay tuned for that. Timestamps in the video description. Let's get going. Right, so before I get going, I want to reassure you that this video is free of politics and personal opinions from me about the election. I am an investor and I align my video content thereafter because I'm trying to give investing advice. Secondly, I don't recommend trading around these short-term movements. Stick to your long-term plan as an investor and you'll be fine. So Republican or Democrat, landslide, close call, Trump or Biden. You know, it doesn't really matter. And whatever happens, it has pretty much happened before. And every election is a big, big, uh, dramatic thing. And just as history, the stock market tends to repeat itself and have the same reaction over and over again. But do keep in mind that history only serve, serve as a rough guideline for future trends and is not a guarantee for future results. Uh, speaking of results, most of the numbers I have found for this video came from an article from usbank.com. So head over there, give them so, some love for this great article. So in the 12 months leading up to an election, the market actually tends to have a bit of a muted performance, only seeing about 6.5% in those 12 months, which is 2% lower than the average 8.5%. Now, this probably comes down to just uncertainty. You know, uh, people don't really know what's going on. And in times of turbulence, people tend to avoid risk instead of taking one. And investing in stocks is very much so a risk. Now, although the market moves slowly on a whole, in shorter periods of days, weeks or months, it can be quite wild. And as big news comes out of big poll numbers, some candidate criticizing a trade agreement and the other one proposing new taxes and regulations on bank, the stock market wildly fluctuates. So from day to day, I wouldn't really look much into what the market is doing because the market, just like everyone else, are just going nuts. So for example, Trump's tough stance on China has put a strain on the stock market over the last couple of years. So I'm sure a more lenient candidate like Joe Biden would ease the tensions just a little bit. But Biden, on the other hand, is proposing higher corporate and capital gain ta gains taxes that can also stir some controversy and put a strain on the market. So whichever way it swings, it will swing. <laughs> so as an investor, I wouldn't worry too much about all the big headlines surrounding an election. As the, the market's reactions to big new ideas from the, the candidates is usually stronger than the actual economic impact of the ideas were they to be implemented. So don't sell your tech stocks if one candidate calls out for more regulations on the industry and don't sell your banks if the other one uh, proposes higher corporate taxes. Take it all in stride, stick to your long-term plan. Now, on election day and the following days, the market tends to go haywire. So I made a list of the three days out performance of the market after the most recent uh, presidents were elected. So most of them were elected on a Tuesday or Wednesday. So these are the three following days. So for Trump, the market went down 2.3%, Obama down 5%, Bush down 3.2%, Clinton up 4%, Bush senior down 2.5%, Reagan up 1.5%, 
and Carter up 1.9. Investors also keep a close eye on the fiscal policy of each candidate. So if one is stricter than the other, that can have an impact on the market. Other regulations to look out for are bank regulations, capital and corporate gains taxes, fiscal stimulus lenience or strictness, as well as trade agreements. So comments on these sorts of policies can create huge swings in the market and can actually have an economic impact. Keep in mind that certain sectors of the economy are also more susceptible to election-related swings than the others. So banks uh, react quite harshly to financial regulations, more or less of it. Healthcare companies react on Medicare policies and car makers can react on like CO2 emission restrictions and so on. In the subsequent 12 months after the election, the market actually sees an even more muted performance than leading up to the election, with only about 5% gain, which is again compared to 8.5% on average and 6.5% leading up to the election. Again, this, I don't know the reason for this, but it is what it is. If a president is re-elected though, that is considered good news for the market since things will remain the way they are, the market still does about 6.5%, so equivalent of the 12 months leading up to the elections. But as you can see, we're talking about a percentage here, a percentage there, and in the big picture, it doesn't really matter. So who does the stock market like the best? Well, historically, the best combination has been a Democratic Senate, a Republican House, and a Democratic President. And in the years when this has been the case, the stock market has seen about 13.6% gain. This can all be just a result of luck though. And if we look at this chart from S&P and Dow Jones Limited, we can see that the trend overall is too vague to draw a conclusion upon. And the big swings you know, up and down in the market are usually caused by the Great Depression, the World War, the dot-com bubble or the financial crisis, none of which were the fault of the current administration. But overall, of the two big options, the stock market tends to go up more during Democratic presidents' term than Republican ones. The difference is small, but take it for what it's worth. To sum it up, the stock market actually doesn't like elections, especially not if a new president is elected, because you know what, the market, as most of us, prefer things to remain the same. New taxes, regulations and new trade agreements being signed and being cancelled is nothing but bothersome noise for the market. The market wants things to just go on. But whatever happens in 2020 or 2024 and beyond, the important thing for you as an investor is to stick to your long-term investing goal and invest in great businesses showing great promise going into the future. Don't even read the news about an election. Invest your money, go out and vote, and that's it. Hopefully, hope you like this video. Wasn't very helpful, but maybe interesting. Who knows? I had to postpone my video about the Osborne effect because I had to do the election right now because that is what everyone's talking about. But my next one is going to be on the Osborne effect. I'll see you then.